Hey, welcome back. So a while back, I got this urge to build an affordable jig, and enough of you guys expressed interest in it, so here we are. In this video, I'll break down the jig's design and construction materials. Let's jump right in. Okay, here we are in Blender, and this is a free 3D app, which is why I'm using it. And uh, here's the jig. And on the jig, I have fixtured a bicycle frame to it. This is uh, actually my first bike frame geometry, and I got it on there just to make sure everything is, is going to work. So let's go ahead and hide that and start talking about... Um, Start talking about this this jig. Okay, so first thing to note, this is a 3D concept. It's not a CAD file. All right, just so you guys know. And uh, I generally will concept these sorts of things out in 3D uh, because it's fast and I don't use other software like CAD because it's slow and you get stuck on all the dimensions. You, you get caught up in all that accuracy stuff and when you're just trying to brainstorm you want to just like model without having to worry about that stuff you're just trying to get the basic idea across with that said most of this is pretty accurate okay so let's start off with the body uh, go ahead and hide the other parts and uh, you'll see that there's there's three layers here we've got the outer layers and these are made up of uh, for this particular setup these are MDF and in the center here we have plywood the MDF are uh, three-quarter inch thick and the plywood is half inch thick and that comes into play a little later on I'll show you guys um, why it's half inch thick in the center uh, also um, I wanted I wanted you guys to have options so you can choose to build this of different materials if you like uh, you could use 2 by 2 inch square tubing if you want you could use aluminum extrusion if you wanted uh, the basic design of this whole thing is um, it is changeable so you can modify this to work for the materials at your disposal depending on where you live and your budget all right, so that's the spine. Let's move on to the head tube fixture. Okay, so this here is the head tube fixture. Uh, you can see it can sl um, Let's do it this way. I'll select this guy, and it'll slide up and down just like this, like so. And you can you loosen these knobs, and this will uh, this will allow you to slide it up and down. Um, let's talk about materials. So the the knobs are attached to one quarter inch twenty threaded rod. So the majority of this jig, anything that's kind of like tied together like this, is going to use one quarter inch twenty threaded rod. And this plate here is uh, it's one eighth inch thick plate. So we got one eighth inch thick plate here, and one eighth inch here. Um, there's more MDF and plywood sandwiched in here, and then right here we have a uh, half inch threaded rod. So that's why I designed this with half inch. Uh, plywood in the center. This is to accommodate this half inch threaded rod um, and what that does is it allows you to have this completely in line in the center line with the jig without having to you know use any fancy equipment to try to get this dr hole drilled or get this threaded rod centered so that's kind of the idea behind that. Alright let's uh, let's pull this thing apart so get that there uh, we're gonna pull this thing out here. Oh, actually, let me show you how this thing turns. Um, so, this rotates right at the... The head tube is like right here, and it rotates right at the bottom center of the head tube. 
That's, that is how this is designed. And that is so that you can um, uh, lay out your frame onto this jig, uh, get it out of, for example, BiCAD using the dimensions in BiCAD and easily get it set up, get this jig uh, measured in and set up for your frame. So that is why that rotation point is right there. Okay? And that rotates your head tube. And if you come around this other side, uh, it's using this right here as its pivot point. So that is why I designed it like that. That holds that that center, bottom center of the head tube. It holds that rotation axis in place. Okay. Let's pull this thing apart so you guys can see the inner workings here. So I'm going to take out this knob. So this knob, you tighten these two knobs, these two, and that holds the head tube angle in place. It'll hold the fixture. All right, so let's pull that out. Let's uh, pull this guy out, this plate. Okay. Uh, this this plate here, this this is just screwed into the MDF, okay? And that holds your threaded rod in, in place here. You can see here there's uh, there's two uh, half-inch nuts. And these look like washers, these guys here. But they are not washers. Uh, those are going to be custom-made. And again, these are um, uh, one-eighth inch thick. They're going to be cut from this same uh, 1 8 inch plate that you, you guys will end up having to get. Um, you could use aluminum too. It depends on what's at your disposal. Uh, but 1 inch, 1 8 inch plate is cheaper, so I recommend using that. Um, and I will show you guys how to make these without fancy tooling. Um, it's, it's quite doable with like a drill and like an angle grinder or a drill and any kind of grinder. You can you can make this, um, and I'll show you guys how when that time comes. Uh, but just know that that's what that is there, and it's sandwiched between two half-inch uh, nuts and uh, the MDF. So if we pull this out, you can see we've got uh, half-inch plywood in here, and it's it's sandwiched in there very nicely. And then on the other side, we have one extra piece of MDF. And so that, that is so that I could offset this rotation uh, doohickey thing from the head tube. I didn't want to, I could have put it right here and it would have been too close to my liking, especially if you guys end up um, throwing a uh, tapered head tube on here. It's going to stick out more. So I, I opted to kind of offset this and, and pull it out. It, in doing so, I had to also offset, you know, where it um, it's attached. Uh, the pressure point pinches the the spine of the jig. All right. So these are <clears throat> these are quarter inch nuts. And again, here we got a uh, we've got screws just kind of holding this piece in place to here. That's all that is. Let me pull that out so it doesn't look wacky. Uh, and uh, and this guy here is just another piece of, of steel, and that is screwed in as well. You can see there. Uh, this little thing here, um, let's see, can I get in there closer? So this little, um, this is again, this is one quarter inch, uh, and this is uh, just a rod. It's not threaded, it's just a rod. You could, however, uh, throw a th tiny threaded rod in there and put nuts on either end here, uh, but... For me, and I think you guys have the tools to to do this too if you're going to build a jig, unless you're, of course, building like a wooden bike or a carbon frame, um, you'll likely have access to a welder or uh, some kind of braze, brazing setup, in which case you can braze this little uh, lug in here so that uh, you don't have to, you know, use nuts on either end. Uh, that's my plan anyway. I'm going to just kind of tack weld on this side to hold this in place. Um Yep, and so that's pretty much the head tube fixture. All right. Now, let's talk about the bottom bracket fixture. That's next. 
Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> Sorry. I just got over a cold, so I'm going to keep clearing my throat. I'll try to edit that out of the video as much as possible, but if I don't, I apologize. This is the bottom bracket fixture, and you'll see here we've done something very similar. We've got uh, MDF, MDF, MDF. Uh, we've got our... Uh, We've got our, what is that, uh, eighth inch steel plate, eighth inch steel plate, more MDF with a half inch um, spacer in the center there, the half inch plywood. And so again, the idea behind this again is as long as you use equal parts on either side, you're going to get this thing even, uh, you know, it's going to be dead centered as long as you do this. Um, Again, this will prevent all that crazy tooling, you know, so that you can get, you know, your bottom bracket centered and all that sort of stuff. It's um, pretty much no-brainer stuff here. Or rather, you'll be able to build this without having to think too much, and that's the kind of building I like to do too, so. Uh, all right, so let's pull this out here. You can see we've got, um, whoa, we've got... One quarter inch 20 threaded rod again that just shoots right through to the other side and holds this thing together like a nice little, the nice little sandwich that it is, your MDF sandwich. Um, I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, oh, how the heck am I going to get all these holes drilled perfectly and all that sort of stuff so that this thing is like, you know, sitting properly up here. And the answer to that is I will show you guys in the construction video when I actually build this thing. Um, it may require a little bit of MDF fixturing, uh, but it is totally doable with basic tools. So just just so you know, this is not going to be an impossible thing. You don't need something fancy. Um, however, I will say if you own a drill press and they're relatively affordable, I highly recommend getting one for this build, and it'll come in extremely handy if you're just a frame builder in general. Uh, it's a very useful tool. But if, like, you're building, well, if you're building just one frame in your lifetime, you're probably not going to bother building this thing. <laughs> uh, but if you build, like, you know, multiple frames a year, uh, this will be very useful to you. So I recommend, yeah, probably getting a drill press. But if you for whatever reason you hate drill presses that's fine you don't have to use one um i'll show you guys how to get these hole drills prop holes drilled properly without one all right so the idea behind the design of this thing is i wanted it to be a quick release and i wanted the ability to get this bike frame off of this jig without having to undo this um, bottom bracket fixture every single time, like unscrew the two end caps and like, like I didn't want to deal with that. And um, yeah, and the reason behind that is there's going to be times when you're going to want to get your bike frame off the jig and you might want to throw it on a, uh, um, you know, like a flat table to check your alignment or for whatever reason, you're going to, you might want to get it off this jig. So I, I set up this little thing here. These are hooks on springs. And the idea behind this is that when you want to get it off, you just un, you know, you just unspring these things so the hooks aren't on there and you just pull this thing right off. You just whoop, there it is. It is now off of the bottom bracket fixture. Uh and this this guy here, it's pretty much the same deal. It's um it's half inch threaded rod. Uh, we're going to build these little cups the same exact way we build the head tube um, cups. They're not quite cones. I guess end caps, we'll call them. And uh, I'll show you guys how to do that. It's not going to be too difficult. And there you go. And so, like, the, the beauty behind all this is no matter what you build, you will have the tools to make any kind of fixturing you need because it's all based off, um, you know, things that are readily available. Your half-inch threaded rod, half-inch nuts, uh, these little cups that I'll show you how to make, which will be, once you know how to make it, you'll be able to make them of any size to fit whatever you need. So, yeah, so there's the bottom bracket. And again, at, um, at the bottom here, we've got the same kind of pinching set up, this thing here. 
is going to uh, it's going to screw in there and and put force on this and tighten them up against the uh, the spine of this jig. So that is the quick release bottom bracket fixture. Um, with that said, there's going to be a little um, there's going to be a little tension here. This is going to be a little tight, and that all depends on how tight you tighten this this bit up here. I don't recommend tightening this up too much. You won't need to. Uh, so I don't recommend that. We're also going to use, we're going to use glue to glue the um, the MDF and plywood pieces together. But we're also, um, I haven't decided yet. Um, I will probably show you guys a, a way to get these things on here without slipping around. You don't want to epoxy these things on here to prevent them from slipping in addition to the, the nuts that are holding it on. Because there may come a time where you're going to want to get these off. Um, for who knows whatever reason. Maybe you're going to build a fat bike and you need to throw in a few more spaces in here to get a, a wider uh, bottom bracket shell on there, in which case you're going to want to be able to take these nuts off and pull these things out. And if you, um, yeah, if you epoxy these things on there in addition to screwing it in there or bolting it in there, that's going to be a problem. So I'll show you guys a way to get these to not slide around. Uh, it's it's pretty simple actually. Um, oh yeah, so the other thing I almost forgot about is this whole thing is based off of a, a quick release. And so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, what about this though? This is not quick release. Um, the head tube fixture. So the idea behind the head tube fixture is it is quick release if you get this nut right here. If you get a quick release nut, uh, you'll probably be able to find them. I think I've searched and found them. Uh, but if you can't find one, I will show you guys how to make one. Um, it's essentially just like, you know, you're just cutting this nut in half is what you're doing. And then you're putting a, a sp uh, some kind of springing, a spring-loaded mechanism, uh, a springing, springy thing <laughs> to uh, put keep the tension on there. It, again, these things don't need to be super strong. It's just holding your top cup uh, top cap on there just enough. It's just putting enough pressure on the top cap, so it doesn't need to be super super strong. Anyway, that's a this will be a quick release nut. So that is the bottom bracket thing fixture, and um, again same situation. You're just sliding along this uh, the spine here. And uh, once this thing is like set up, you can probably put a scale on here. And the same here, you can put a scale on here. Um, that's up to you, completely optional. You could just use a ruler and have some marked points for where zero is and all that other, and, and that, uh, that thing, bit. All right, now let's talk about the, um, the rear axle or the dropout fixture. Okay, on to the dropout fixture. Uh, first, I'll show you how this thing moves. You just kind of, whoop, just kind of move it back and forth like that. That moves this whole, I don't even know what I'd call this. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to call this. Let's just call it the dropout fixture. But it's it's more than that, as you can see. Okay. So that moves it left and right, and then you can move this up and down, and that'll determine your your uh, your drop, your bottom bracket drop. So you can see here right now we get a negative drop, um, and that's important in case you're building a BMX or something like that. Uh, I just wanted it to have that option, uh, but it's probably going to be up here most of the time for whatever you're building. Okay, so again, the same situation back here. I wanted some kind of quick release mechanism again. And uh, the way I did that, I, I kind of jumped around quite a bit on this design. And I came to this. And the reason I did it this way is, again, it's kind of like that machining thing. I didn't want you guys to have to machine anything. I wanted to use um, the same... Uh, principles we've been using on this whole jig, which is kind of like the MDF plywood sandwich thing we got going on. I wanted to use the same materials, um, eighth inch 
plate uh, quarter inch nuts here uh, yeah so that's what's going on here and so let me see if I can grab this uh, is it this yeah so you can see here this uh, this basically tensions your your rear axle and the design on this rear axle thing is we've got kind of like a V uh, a V groove in here and that is to accommodate different size rear axles depending on what you're dealing with uh, this is a pretty standard I forget what size this is. it's a standard size rear axle all right and uh, you're going to loosen these levers here I originally had knobs on here but you can see it was too close to the rear axle and I didn't want it to get in the way of the dropouts so I put levers in this case uh, to tension up the tensioner the axle tensioner okay so there it is it's loose you can just pull this thing right out you be able to pull your bike frame right out like that without having to take that axle off all right um, I won't pull this thing all apart I think it's pretty straightforward you guys get the idea I, I will do this so that you can see um, so that you can see what's going on with the piece it's attached to so um, it's just steel plate again uh, this kind of Z shape I guess and you've got more MDF sandwiched in there that's all there is to that really and then on the other side we've got our knob and uh, that tightens up and tensions this in place so it doesn't move okay so that is the rear axle uh, the dropout fixture um, there's two nuts in here and that's to kind of like hold this in place you'll just uh, um, counter tension these to kind of keep them in place and in here is where your dropouts will get um, you know squished in there um, yeah so that's the rear dropout fixture or the rear axle fixture and now let's talk about the uh, the c-tube fixture okay so the C tube fixture um, we've got this boom thing going on boom uh, it took me a while to come up with a design for this and that is because I did not want I originally was going to like stick something from this uh, um, dropout fixture to like the head tube part of the spine and it just got really crazy and uh, the more I looked at it, the more I realized, well, it just needs this thing to just kind of hold hold the C-tube in place, centered up here. And uh, I think this will work. Um, it's really going to... I'm going to have to build this and just kind of test it out and see how well it works. But I think this will work. Uh, the idea behind this is you can move it anywhere. Um, and you can see these tensioning knobs they will slide back and forth on this groove here this groove so you know depending on where your C tube is you can locate this thing uh, to cap it off and you'll be able to rotate it too you know depending on where your your C tube is and um, this guy here oh, not that uh, this guy here will of course be able to rotate as well to to match your C2 bangle all right so let me pull this apart so you can see um, some parts I don't need to pull apart uh, again same knobs as before we've got a quarter inch 20 threaded rod to tension the um, the eighth inch I keep forgetting the thickness of this plate eighth inch just sounds so thick to me but it's actually just the right amount sixteenth inch would be too thin uh, so yeah eighth inch steel plate and you'll notice uh, the whole design of this thing I tried to keep the amount of steel plate I used to a minimum and that is because that stuff's expensive that's probably the most expensive part of this whole build um, so I I decided it needed it because it needs that strength especially right here where it's holding the whole this whole tower up um, yeah so that's why I chose that now you could probably if you're on a super super budget 
Uh, you could replace all this steel plate with uh, MDF. That's prob- It probably could work. I wouldn't recommend it, though, because the parts that hold the actual, the actual um, bike frame, um, I don't know, the, the bottom bracket shell, it, it needs something strong like steel plate. So that's why you'll see where it interfaces. It's always steel, steel plate, except for right here. But for the most part, it's steel plate. All right, so um, let's talk about this thing. Again, this is kind of similar to the head tube setup. Um, you've got you've got your your knob here, um, quarter inch twenty. Uh, oops, I don't want to do that. I'll just pull it up so you can see it. Uh, and you've got this guy here, and this is you know it's just a. Uh, um, this is just a half inch threaded rod again using nuts on either end and you're doing that same setup here where you have the MDF half inch and then three quarter inch MDF again and this takes all the brain work out of centering this hole you know um, and this guy here this is just gonna be a wooden cone you're gonna use to hold the C tube in place um, I didn't make it aluminum because that would be super hard to uh, fabricate without a a lathe so we can make this cone using basic tools like I said before uh, fairly easy so that's the idea behind that and wood is totally adequate uh, for your purposes there alright so that is the last bit of this jig alright so one last thing before we wrap up uh, this MDF and also plywood, uh, pretty much any porous material that you use uh, to build the the spine, the body of the jig, uh, you're going to need to seal it. And especially MDF because MDF is porous and when it absorbs moisture, it will expand. So if you are uh, brazing uh, you're gonna be using flux and that's gonna get all over this thing so sealer so I'll I'll show you guys how to do that once I start building it I don't know exactly what sealer I'll use but I'll figure it out I will answer a few questions that I know you guys are gonna ask and so uh, the first one is um, will I sell this and I might sell it and I might sell it as a kit uh, but that's only if this thing, like, works well, like, within my expectations. Uh, with that said, um, whether I sell it or not, I'm going to, uh, release the plans for you guys so that, uh, you can build it on your own if you like. Alright guys, so that is a wrap. I will see you in the next one. Cheers! On your mark, ready, set, let's go. Dance floor pro, I know, you know, I go psycho when my new joint hit. Just can't sit, gotta get jiggy with it. Ooh, that's it. Now, honey, honey, come ride. TKNY, all up in my eyes. Gotta try to bag with a lot of stuff in it. Give it to your friend, let's spin. Everybody looking at me, glancing a kid. Wishing they was dancing a jig. Here with this handsome kid. Sing a cigar, right from people keep bar. Just bite it. Sport a look, I don't like it. Still wait the hand me on the hand, stay on play. Give it up, jiggy, make it. Get it.